Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today I'm going to talk about testing with Python and the unit test module. This is an introductory video tutorial for you to learn about testing with Python. To get started, uh, let's talk just a little bit about Python's unit test. I have another article about this topic that you can read called Python 3 Testing and Intro to Unit Test on my blog, Mouse vs. Python. That's why I bring it up here on this slide. So if you if you prefer to read or you want to go back and grab these examples, you can go there. All right, so unit test supports four features and that are common in most uh, testing environments. The test fixture, the test case, the test suite, and the test runner. So test fixtures are used for setup and teardown. We'll talk about this more in a moment. But basically, when you have a multiple sets of tests, or just multiple tests in one suite, those tests will operate on the same item in different ways. And you want each test to start with a clean slate. So, for example, if you had a database, you might start out with a database with 10 records in it. Um, the setup would create that database with the 10 records. Your next test may be to write some new rows to that table, and now you have 12 records or 20 records. That's fine and dandy until you get to the second test, which wants to delete um, some records or test that something isn't there yet. It's going to be looking for 10 records again. And because it's no longer 10 records, your, test, your second test will fail. So the whole idea of the setup and teardown is it'll set up the database for you with the right number of records and the right amount of content and then it will tear down before the next test runs. And so that just helps your code always have a clean database or a clean, you know, whatever other things you need to have for each test to work correctly. Now a test case is just a word or a phrase that describes the actual test. Whereas a test suite is a group of tests. And the test should really be related. So let's say you have a test that hits an endpoint you might have a suite that tests the endpoint with good data, bad data, and data that tries to hit the extremes of what that data point or data endpoint can take. So some endpoints, you know, it might only accept two connections, so you want to test it with three. Or it might accept data that is of a certain uh, number of bytes. And so you want to test that it can handle more bytes than it should be should take and it should fail gracefully. All right, a test runner is some, a tool that runs your tests for you. Unit test does all of these things. The first thing you need to uh, be able to use unit test is some actual code to test with. So I have provided a module called mymath.py. It contains an add, a subtract, a multiply, and a divide function inside of it. You'll note that none of this code actually has anything, like any error handling. So if I were to pass in two strings, it would happily concatenate them. That's probably not what you want it to do. So when you're writing your tests, you can make it fail when it tries to concatenate strings. That's a, a good failure test to try. Or you could have it only test um, adding integers or adding floats. And that's up to you. And then you might have to make your code more robust and go back in here so that when it does concatenate text and it fails, you want to change your add function so that now it no longer um, concatenates text anymore. So let's go ahead and learn how to add a test. Adding a test in Python, you just need to import the module that you want to test, MyMath, import unit test, which is the unit test module that comes with Python, and then you create a class. This class will subclass unit test dot test case. In this case, we're going to test add, which is describing we're going to write a one or more tests that will test the add function in my math. In this case, I'm going to test adding integers. Um, I add a doc string that says what this test is going to do. It is going to try to get a result from my math .add of what one and two will equal. And then you can just uh, assert that the result equals three. So uh, here's where you could add, pass in some strings and you'll end up, you know, adding two strings together, you'll get 13 as a string, or 12 as a string, I mean, and that'll be wrong, for example. Anyway, let's see um, how you create a suite of tests. So a suite of tests, as you might expect, is a group of one or more, or two or more tests. 
So in this case, let's make this just a little bit bigger. Uh, we'll have add integers, add floats, and add strings. So here we're expecting it to add the strings together. Now, you know, normally you wouldn't want this. So in add strings, we probably want to assert that it doesn't work right. But just for fun, I went ahead and added it. So this is going to concatenate. Um, let's go zoom back out. So this is called a suite because there's more than one test in this in this case, in this uh, class. So let's learn how to run our tests. Normally, you can run Python three test mymath.py or Python three test mymath.py dash um, fee. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and create a terminal, and we'll zoom in a little bit, and we'll run Python three. Um, Let's see, we want to do dash m. Actually, I don't think we need to do dash m here. We just want to do test my math, right? So let's do test my math dot pi. And we'll just run it. And we have a failure because I've I've got some something wrong in my code. So let's go back and look at that. I think my test has a, has something wrong. I think I made a typo in it. So let's go to test my math. Yeah, so I have a typo in there. This this shows you what happens if you pass in the wrong value. So one and two is not four. So let's change it and make it one and three. So let's go ahead and save that. I'll jump back over here. And we will just rerun that. So now when you run it, you get a little bit of output. Three dots. It ran three tests in 0, 0.000 seconds. OK, so that's good. The tests worked the way they were supposed to. And there's no failures. If you want to have more information, you can pass pass a dash v for verbose mode, and it'll print out um, the doc strings. So this one prints out, you know, which functions are running, add floats, the doc string, it went OK. Add integers, the add integers uh, doc string, it also went OK, and then add strings. A lot more information than just three dots, but you most of the time you don't need all that information. And if you have a lot of tests then maybe you don't want to have all that information anyway. And you'll, as you may recall, when you have the dot .f um, for the failure, let's, let's go ahead and redo that. When you have the failure, it actually tells you what's wrong. So let's save that, and we'll just rerun that. So now we have dot .f dot. It tells you that adding the integer has failed, and it tells you why it failed. So that's, that's just a really handy, easy way to see what failed without having a bunch of other extra stuff in there. Okay, let's continue. Unit test also has a command line interface. So if you do Python 3-m unit test dash h, you will get this output printed in your terminal that tells you all the different optional arguments you can pass to it, like dash h for help, uh, quiet mode. Um, you can have it show local variables in the tracebacks, which is helpful for debugging. Um, fail fast mode, so I'll stop in the first error. So if you have like 100 tests in your test suite, you might want to fail on the first test that fails so the rest of them don't run unnecessarily. Um, catch is for catching uh, control C and displaying the results so far. So if I tried to cancel a long running test suite, it would, it would catch that and print out the results that are, have occurred so far. And then of course you have buffer mode. And then at the end, it shows some different examples of how you can run just the test module, just a class in the module, or even a specific test method, which is a test case in this case. All right, let's go ahead and look at that. So let's say we just want to run the module, um, test, uh, test uh, mymath.py. Um, let's go back over here, and we'll just do clear, and we'll paste that in there. So that's going to fail like it did before. Um, so if you want to just run, let's, uh, let's fix this code real quick, just to make this easier. Um, we'll close that, and we'll run that again. Now we, they're all passing. Now let's try running just one test. So here we have my math 2 test add, test add integers. So if we run that all by itself, you'll see that it only runs one test. And if you want, you can add the dash v and get a little bit more verbosity from that test. Um, you, can you can run all the tests in the class. 
which is super helpful if you have if I had like a test uh, subtract class and I didn't want to run all those I could just run my add ones which we all know has three tests in it okay what if you wanted to skip a test the unit test module provides a way to do that to skip a test you can add unit test dot skip and it will always skip that test uh, this is a decorator that comes built in to the unit test uh, module Personally, I don't know why you'd do this. I would probably delete the test myself, but you know, maybe there's a valid reason to leave it in there and you want to write the test before you know some other infrastructure is added to your system so that you remember um, to re-add it uh, later on. Uh, what if you want to skip unless? This one's, this one's actually helpful and I think you could use any time. So if you're a cross-platform developer, uh, you might want certain tests that only work on Windows or Linux or Mac. So here, we'll skip this test unless it is run on a Windows machine. So sys.platform.starts with win. This one requires Windows. We'll skip it if it's not Windows. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and run it. I think I can see this one being really helpful. So here's just like two different ways you could skip a test. One that makes a lot of sense. One that makes less sense, but may be useful to you, depending on your use case. All right. Let's talk a little bit about setup and teardown. To set up and tear down, you actually can override the setup and tear down methods. Note that these methods are part of test case, and so they are camel case. You note the uppercase U and the uppercase D in tear down. Um, you have to type it out exactly as you see here on the screen to override these and make them work correctly in unit test. Um, in this case, I'm just building a SQLite database with a certain amount of Couple of, couple of rows of data or just one one row of data. And then to tear down, I just delete the database. There's lots of different ways you could do this. And I have another example on my website that inserts a lot more data that you could play around with. All right, that ends this particular uh, tutorial on how to use unit test in Python. I know I didn't cover everything, so feel free to drop me some questions or go check out the Python documentation. Thank you so much for watching.